Welcome to the Water Boys, episode 15. Uh, today we'll have Dawson Stairs and Patrick Gay on from the Charlottetown Islanders, another Islanders episode. Yes. Speaking of know. Islanders, the New York Islanders, they suck. <laughs> <You're just> gonna, <laughs> Frankie Borelli, come for me. You're just going to go out of, right off the hop again? 100%. Why? What's, what's your beef with the Islanders this, this time around? Honestly, I wish they never skipped the, you know, Sailor jersey. That was my favorite jersey in the NHL, and they just completely tossed it in the trash, and ever since then, I hate New York Islanders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now they're 13 points in the playoffs, but they got 71 points behind uh, Washington's, like, 84, and yeah. they got, like, 14 games left, I think Washington does, so the only way they're getting in the playoffs is basically if Washington loses every single game. Yeah, which, um, that's not gonna- So, the Islanders... Might as well just pack it in for the year, in my opinion. Yeah. Why don't you get hype again for August and October, everyone? You know. That's hey. that's your mo- memo right now for the Islanders. Yep. Yeah. And then your dreams are going to be crushed again. So, I'm looking forward to wow. that. Matt Barzell, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. And Noah Dobson of the, you know, island born. Yeah. I feel feel bad that you're just going to... Well, that's an individual. The team is terrible. You're just going to shit on them. Like, I yep. just feel bad for them. And you're going to go at Frankie Borelli once again. Because hey. last week, you know, you said, screw it. Frankie Borelli, come at me. So why why Frankie Borelli again? Well, like, you know what? If I had the wings of a sparrow and if I had the ass of a crow, I'd fly over New York tomorrow and shit on those islanders below. And that, that's another <laughs> grantism, yeah. folks. We, we were like two minutes into this yeah. episode and we got a one grantism. So... That's a new segment we have started. Uh, every yeah. every saying that he comes up with is now called a grantism. We'll start a tally. I'm gonna start a tally. It's yeah. gonna be like a collage of clips. Is what it's okay. gonna be. Yeah. Every every grantism that you you come up with, hundred percent, is gonna be a clip, and I'm gonna yeah. make it a big big portrait for you one day. Oh, thank you. That'd be the best birthday gift ever. <laughs> now hey. turning turning into. Your other prediction? Yeah. Your Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, yeah. I, I think there's still some heat there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, no, that... <laughs> you know, what, what happened to that one? Yeah. Well, you know, I was hopeful. Like, I mean, the they're, they're, I'd say. No, you literally Not said good. they're going to wipe out Dallas. Dallas has, like, got three games <sighs> in hand on them still. And, like, they're still a point above them now. They didn't have a good week. You know what? Let's not hold it against them. The, uh, the Golden Knights... Are a good organization, and I think I know. I believe in them. I believe in them like Santa Claus. They I mean, got this one. I've been saying since day one that they well, not since day one, since last week that they need <laughs> day one. Yeah, seven day days one, ago. Day one was seven days ago. That they need to experience not to make the playoffs. Yeah, their fans do not the players. Like the players, like it is what it is. Like oh, I feel bad for them, but. The fans, yeah. the fans are terrible. Like they're up there for one of the worst fan bases in the NHL. I'm sorry to say, they're just they're up there with. You the, don't like the parades with the Maple Leafs. Like they're up there for the worst fan base. You don't like the Maple Leafs fan base. Oh, they're just oh, annoying. that's sacrilege. They're they're just annoying. I love the Maple Leafs fan base. If, if you want to talk commitment, like yeah, if you yeah. want to talk commitment, you look at the Maple Leafs like, fans. I like some. I like some Maple Leafs fans. Because they're realistic. They're fun. But then you go to some places... Are you talking about the Matthews and Tavares bandwagoners? No, no, no. Those, those are the annoying people okay. that go, Yeah, cool. Matthews, he's he's obviously just above McDavid and everything in every category. And the Maple Leafs, they're winning the cup this year like they are every year. Like, those guys... Do they? Are they wrong, though? Are they wrong? Yeah, the Matthews wrong. is wrong. Matthews right now looking better than McDavid. No. Yes? No. Yes. Despite his, you know, we talked about his hot head tendencies. No. But no, McDavid is looking better than McDavid. McDavid right is the best player in the world, and there's a reason oh, why yeah. they call him McJesus. Yes. Okay. McDavid, best player in the NHL right now. I'm with you there. Great player. 
But What's right your argument now, then? This season? You just this said this season? You just said this season? Matthews. You just said right now with McDavid. Okay. Right now, <laughs> overall, from active players okay. throughout their careers, McDavid. Okay. From this season, active players? It's it's not it's so McDavid. And He's doing good, man. Matthews. What do you count against Matthews? Matthews, in my opinion, is number three. Number three? Who's number two? McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon's number two. He's Mc- the best. He's probably, honestly, I might put him number one. McKinnon, he's not good. McKinnon's like concrete studs in the house. You can lean on him. But, man, he's not better than Matthews. Yes, he is. Matthews, McDavid, McKinnon. The three M's. McDavid, McKinnon, and Matthews. That's that's the levels. There's different levels, okay. and you got to look at it as Matthews hasn't even taken that team out of a first round playoff like series. McKinnon's gone to the Western Conference Finals. What about McDavid? David's gone to the second round. Yeah. Well, like Matthews, yeah, like the regular season. Matthews, great, great. Everyone gets to see the parade. <laughs> Of goals that he's going to score. Because he's going to score a bunch of goals like he, he always is. does. He is. But guess what? When it comes playoff time, what happens? They tighten up on him. He can't get a shot off like he could in the regular season. Because they have time to focus on him. And that's it. And then you got guys that don't step up. And they don't have physicality on the team. Yeah. Like they don't stand up for each other. There's a video that went out like of... A Montreal player running over Toronto's goalie, and none of the players did anything to defend the goalie. Like, it, it's kind of pathetic. Okay. I'll bet you a pizza that Leafs go further than the Oilers in the playoffs this year. I won't bet you the Oilers. I'll bet you the Avalanche. <laughs> well, I'm not buying that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. You have to go into the cup. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. Well, speaking of contest. Mm-hmm. The cup, mm-hmm. the championship, the glory. Yeah. You know who's going to it? Who? My North Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah. yeah. And I called it. You did. With the Grantism, mind you. You know, I'm basically the best there is. Congratulations to the Grant. best. He two called ago. one one uh, prediction. Um, yeah. He's now the um, goat of predictions. I, I am. I would book all your sports betting through me. Just give me a DM on the Waterboys page. I'll answer, you know. <laughs> Dash Grant. Just like, yep, we uh we predict this. Justin predicts this, but listen to me. So what do you what do you think was the key then for oh, getting your win there? Just being a great program and stopping them in the fourth quarter. Oh man, we crushed them on shooting. We crushed them all around. They they got us in rebounds, I think. But man, for offensive play, North Carolina all the way. I I, I can't agree with that. I, I think that Duke this was Duke's game to win. They, they played a better first half. Duke played a better first half. They played a great first half. I think it was Duke's Duke had, Duke was destined to win, and yeah. they just they just lost it. They choked it away. Yeah. Underneath Coach K's final game. Coach four hundred one K. Four hundred one K. Wow. What's that pun from or reference? I saw it on a t-shirt somewhere. Oh. Okay. That's not a true grantism. Okay. <laughs> so I I just think that. Duke, you know, overall had the better team than North Carolina. Yeah. Um, but anything they just didn't show up to play. Like I don't, happen. I don't know what. It's it March. Happen. It's March. It's well, March. it's April now, but <laughs> it's called March Madness <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> they don't call it March April Madness. April anxiety. How about that? That works. Grant. Everyone knows April showers bring May flowers. Well, that makes no sense. Well, I, I don't know why it doesn't make any sense to you, but... That makes as much sense as a poof flavored lollipop. Uh, you know what? <laughs> it makes as much sense as Colorado winning the cup. Okay, well, you know what? We're done with hockey. <laughs> Let's go on to basketball. We're covering provincial basketball here on the island, Justin. We are. We saw a tournament with a overtime. Yeah. A little thriller. It was. Between uh, Francois and Kensington. Yeah. It, oh, it was a, quite a game. Yeah, the Jaguars. Oh, yeah. It was quite a game. They actually came out. Um, I was not expecting it to be 
as close to a game. Come out in the second half is what it mm-hmm. actually came down to be. There was some talk around Kenzie did there, and then you know. I figured uh, Francois was just gonna actually pull away. Yeah. In the second half. Oh, they were looking good, man. I thought they were gonna really get the comeback. And yeah. So this is, that didn't go their way. But. So this was uh, coverage of day one of the A Division high school provincial basketball tournaments. Yeah. Um, we'll now, be doing. Yeah. This will already be out by the time it's done, but we'll be yeah. doing double A and triple A as well. So we'll have stuff on that for you yeah. guys. Well, the fans now know, but what's your prediction for triple A? Triple A? I don't really have one for the girls, to be honest with you. Um, it's just going to be a game time decision, basically, for yeah. me. <laughs> um, Obviously, from the A, we saw a few upsets. So well, yeah, but both field I, upsets are in. I, I feel like. For AAA, I'm going to have to lean against the Three Oaks. Yeah. we got a former alumni of the show, yeah. Zachary Zach, Blood. Yeah, Zach Blood coming, and he's going to play uh, Tuesday night um, for the title. So yeah. I just I think that Three Oaks has an advantage. They've been a really good basketball school in the past, and it'll be an exciting game to watch for sure. In other basketball news, yeah. we have the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. They're sitting in a spot now that they actually are not going to make the playoffs normally. This new play-in tournament that they're doing, which in my opinion is the stupidest thing ever, um, where it allows from 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th seeded teams to play to get into the playoffs and get those 7th and 8th seeds. Do you not like that? I don't like it at all. I love it. I love it. You're chance giving, for the upset. You're giving 20 teams now a chance to make chance the playoffs. Chance for the upset. Chance for the upset. I'm, it's, I'm for it. It's really not that good of a competition, in my opinion. But I think it is. Because you got to play your best for a lot of games now. A lot That's, more games. You're not wrong with that. Yeah. And but I think we're going to see some better basketball. Do you think Brooklyn's going to win a playoff or a playing game? Oh, they are strong, Justin. They're strong. They've got some offensive talent we've talked about numerous times on the show. Their pickups, but yeah. Kevin Durant just dropped a career high 55 last night, but they yeah. still lost to Atlanta. Yeah. So we have the Brooklyn Nets in a play in yeah. spot, and then we also have the Los Angeles Lakers out of a play in spot. Do you think they're going to even make the play ins? I think they will. I mean, they'll make the play ins. I can't see them going deep, though, because that team just. Man, they don't look like a team old. at all. They just, they are old, yeah. But they just don't have good team chemistry. They don't. Like, LeBron just had a great night. And it seems it, like LeBron has yeah. to have a prime LeBron night every night for them to win. Yeah. And it seemed like in the post game interviews, nobody was like, yeah, congrats to LeBron. No, none of that. No. It was just like, oh, well, on to next week, you know. It was a good game. Mm-hmm. You know, they just don't seem excited for each other. They don't seem like good team chemistry is coming from L.A. right now. I and, agree with that. You know, that's terrible for the playoffs. I would I would totally agree with that. But talking about playoffs, we got the Charlottetown Islanders gearing up yeah. for the playoffs in about a month. And uh, before we turn it over to Dawson Stairs and Patrick Gay, uh, they just had their... Off weekend, we we can yeah. call it. They How played Hell Moosehead's kind of put a whooping on them yeah. once in overtime with point seven seconds left. So that one isn't much for whooping, but no, it was, it was they just went to Halifax. And that building was tough. So. Yeah, it was. It just seems like Halifax kind of has their number this year. Um, I, yeah. Maybe if they match up in the playoffs, it will be bad for Charlottetown. But it just seems like they have their number this year, and. Back-to-back games, um, I know you, you play at 7 o'clock and then you have play the next day against Halifax again, but at 3 yeah. o'clock in Halifax. Had to go that morning, too. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of hard to like get yeah. that same energy, I feel like. You yeah. know, you're playing two games in less than 24 hours. Yeah, that's definitely tough, and... Nine times out of ten, the team that won the first game is going to win that second because there's a lot of momentum there. Just carrying that momentum over. Yeah. And I think that for the Charlottetown Islanders, it was just an off weekend. Like, yeah. overall, their season, like, oh, yeah. they're still ranked top five in all of Canada for having a chance at winning the Mem Cup. Yeah. 
Yeah, they got a lot to work on though in terms of they do. before playoffs. Um, penalty killing or not penalty? Penalties taking, in general. Penalties taking penalties is what they really need to work on. And Dawson and Patrick actually mentioned about that and how they do need to work on that. Yeah. So. Speaking about them, we're going to turn it over to them right now. And here we are with Dawson Stairs and Patrick Gay of the Charlottetown Islanders. Thanks for hopping on, folks. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, obviously a rough weekend there at Halifax. Well, against Halifax in general. You know, what was the focus there going into the first game against Halley at home? Uh... I guess we'll start with like we know we're like an older veteran team where yeah. they have a few younger guys and I think uh, to start like our little mini two game series against them we just kind of took them too lightly and uh, didn't come out strong from the start and that's what led us to our, our defeat the first game and then uh, second game I think we were more focused uh, going into the game and then just a few bad bounces on a few mistakes bad bounces and that's what cost us. And what do you think? Yeah pretty much the same thing like both games we started off pretty lightly yeah. then I like weren't really hunting parts and stuff like that and that came back later in the game and you know we didn't didn't really show up this weekend to be honest like yeah. so it kind of kind of got to us yeah. no you mentioned it before we started here you guys took a lot of penalties in that first game mm-hmm. like how much do you guys think that actually killed you there Friday night uh, I don't even know if I'd just say Friday night. It, it kills us a lot. Yeah. Uh, lately, we've been struggling, I think, with being disciplined on the ice. And our coach, uh, he harps on it pretty hard, just trying to get us to stay out of the box as much as possible. For some reason, we uh, we can't. I think that cost us. Mm-hmm. I mean, our penalty kills. Uh, it was really pretty good, good there Friday night. It was like every four game, five. Every game, they're really yeah. good. But uh, I think just after taking... You know, so many penalties each game. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You've had the practice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's just a handful of particular guys, or what? Uh, no? It's just our whole team in total. I think uh, sometimes instead of just finishing a hit, we go in with our stick and we trip a guy, and yeah. uh, it's just calls like that. Friday night, they're like two-two, like overtime. They they win with point seven seconds left. Like, was that like kind of take the wind out of you guys, like going into Saturday? Do you think or no? Uh, it was tough, like, you know, it's tough to have won it in shootouts or things like that, but at the same time, like, I think two games and two nights, you have the time to, like, refocus and stuff like that, mm-hmm. so, yeah, it hurt to, to lose in overtime 3-2 with 0.7 seconds left, but at the same time, like, it was a new game, so I think it didn't really, like, hurt us, but kind of, kind of affected our confidence maybe yeah, you guys have seen a lot of play outside of regulation in the last month or so mm-hmm. you know what like five overtime and shootout games in the last like yeah. two months or so yeah yeah so is that a focus in practice you know doing the three on threes or what <laughs> well lately we I, I don't know if we've been doing it to focus on that or kind of just for fun we did a couple practices but uh yeah i don't really know i think we just we just go into it the same mentality as we go into like a, yeah. norm, a normal game. Three yeah. on three is the same thing. Just stick to your man and yeah. uh, you know capitalize on the chances you get. Yeah. All right, let's pick it up here, Dawson. <laughs> what flex are you using, man? I saw you in warmies and it looked like you were playing with a rubber band. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm using that an eight an eighty five. Jesus. Yeah. Well, it was weird because like I was breaking eighty five like when I was sixteen playing junior A. I broke quite a few sticks. Yeah. And, like I had to go down to seventy five because there was no more eighty fives left, and I didn't break a single <laughs> seventy five for some reason. Jeez, man. I don't know how how that worked out, but now like since I came back in the queue, like I, I've been using the eighty five flex. And oh, I was just gonna say I wanted to talk about your wipe out there Friday night. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right in front of us too. Yeah, right <laughs> you should pick the other corner. corner. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, I stepped on a puck right after, uh, I think it was on two-on-ones or something, and just went awkwardly <laughs> on the boards, and I heard just Drew Elliott behind me just laughing, so I was like, yeah, all right, I'll just laugh it out again. <laughs> so that's so awkward. Yeah. Smile through the pain. Yeah. yeah. Did they chirp you much after that? Or like? No, but you feel ashamed when it happens, but it, I guess it happened, so... You just got to get up and get back to one. Yeah. <laughs> now, Stairs, you've played on quite a few Q teams, to mm-hmm. be honest. You've played for Sea Dogs and uh, uh, Cape Breton. Cape Breton. Yeah. <laughs> Mind like the, you know, is it fun playing against those other teams? Yeah, I mean, even like I think my first time back in uh, St. John was when I was playing for Cape, and 
even though I knew we weren't a stronger team in Cape, I was definitely really excited. And we ended up getting a, a win and then coming here knowing that we're a contending team. Um, feeling really good into those games, really excited to play like former teams, just uh, make sure I go out there, kind of make a statement, I guess. Something yeah. like that, make sure I play well. Speaking of being a contender, you guys are heating up, you know, obviously tough weekend, but I don't think you guys are going to let that hold you back. How's, you know, going into postseason here in, what, a month? Yeah, yeah, two months. Yeah. 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 How, what's, how's that feeling? Pretty good. Uh, you know, we've lost a little bit of confidence in the past weeks. Our game has been up and down. But uh, I think, like Jim said, well, our coach said in the meetings the other day, we really f- got to focus on details and stuff like that to build up for playoffs. And I think when the time will, will come, we'll be pretty good uh, with pressure and everything like that. Yeah. yeah. Another thing you said, too, is like just um, how every kind of successful team goes through like their little rough patch. And, yeah. Um, yeah, with our struggles lately, I think that's kind of been our rough patch. So it's good to sucks that it's happening, but it's yeah. good to get it out of the way now. So then in playoffs, yeah. it's, it's not an issue for us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I wanted to go to you, Dawson. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not, you're at this point, you're not really new to the team, but like you did get traded midseason to the team. So what's been like the vibe since moving from Cape Breton, not a winning organization right now? to coming to Charlottetown and being on a team that's top five in the Canadian Hockey League? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot different. Coaches are a lot a uh, lot harder on you. They expect have higher expectations. But uh, I think just coming over, it, it felt like I wasn't even a new guy from the start. Everyone from uh, the, coaching, the, sta- like the coaching staff and all the players, they just helped me transition really easy, made me feel welcome mm-hmm. right at home. So. Mm-hmm. What were those expectations when you came over? Uh, it's just no mistakes. <laughs> it's, a tough. Tough, it's a tough one, but just limit your mistakes. You know, like in, uh, in Cape Breton, I'll, I'll have to admit sometimes, like I wasn't always on my best game. Where it's like yeah. here, coming every night, it's like okay, like you're a top team. Like you need to go play your best game yeah. and show that you're a top team, no matter who you're playing. So mm-hmm. welcome to the island. Be perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you guys were second in the CHL rankings. You guys have dropped a fifth. Now, people that are a team that has climbed in those rankings is the Quebec Ramparts. Do you guys think they are the biggest competition going into the playoffs for the pre- is it potential presidential cup? Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, it's really hard to say because we haven't really played against Quebec as many times as we did like Bathurst or St. John mm-hmm. or teams like that because we only played two times against them yeah. per, per season. But yeah, they have a pretty solid team. But I would say our... Probably our biggest, uh, how should I say that? Our biggest enemy would be St. John. St. You know, John. They stacked up for uh, yeah. the Man Cup and everything since they're hosting, so obviously they have a pretty pretty solid team, but uh, yeah. there's a, also a lot of other strong teams like uh, Bathurst, Shawnee Dan, uh, Sherbrooke, Quebec, all those teams. So And Halifax kind of has a number on you guys yeah. Yeah. Like this yeah. season, so. Uh, um, you mentioned about St. John's. They were not hot to start the season. And then since you know they're, they're hosting the Mem Cup, they kind of just loaded up the team, hoping that they can get something going. So yeah. in those games, most recent games against St. John, how has like the intensity been? Like Has it been like a playoff game, you guys feel like, on the ice, or is it just like a regular season game? Yeah, I think every shift it was like a playoff, playoff style game. Uh, we, we really want to beat them, they really want to beat us, so it goes both ways. So it's always a, a very interesting battle mm-hmm. uh, when we go up against them. And uh, yeah, like, like I said, we, we want to beat them as much as they want to beat us. So we uh, it's does a pretty strong, uh, how do I say that, like against each other, like a yeah. uh, pretty strong competition. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's pretty fun to, to play against them. All the games have been real close against yeah. them too. Like yeah, they had one or two in overtime, one yeah. goal games. So yeah, and they beat you what uh, a few weeks ago, too, didn't they? Uh, no, no, they, we beat they, them. We beat them, them six, yeah. four, oh, okay. six four when they came in. But yeah. I think the week before that, when we went over there, they beat us. That was it was yeah. overtime. Yeah. Overtime, yeah. 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 So is there a few guys in particular that they picked up before the Mem Cup that are like, oh man? These guys are gonna be tough. <laughs> uh, well, Sivini's pretty good. Yeah, he's a pretty good D man. 
Uh, they went to get a new goalie, uh, Urchabees from Vito. Yeah. He's pretty good. Uh, who else did they pick up? Dao. Dao. Yeah, Dao is new, Lessard, and guys like that. So, yeah, yeah they, they have a pretty solid team, too. So, Stairs, you play what I would describe somewhat physical game. Yeah. Right? Was that mentioned at all when you came to the <laughs> island? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think like I've always been kind of a, a bigger guy, like yeah. solid on my feet. So uh, the last few games, especially, I, I haven't been hitting as much, and I've been harped on that for. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm definitely trying to pick up on that game, try to bring more energy to the to the ice, and uh, get momentum going for the team. Yeah. And scrapping's basically out of the queue right now. There's only what one every it seems like ten games. Yeah, play, so yeah. I've never been like a big a big fighter though. I don't even think I have a. Cute fight, yeah, maybe a few wrestling <laughs> matches, but uh, haven't dropped the gloves with anyone, not really going out looking for it, but uh, I mean, if a big hit happens, I'm, I'm there, I'm ready to hit a guy. Oh, yeah. You play with a 75 and 85 flex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I want to take it back here a little bit. Uh, I'll first start with Patrick yeah. here, and then I'll go to you. Right. So, you started out, your minor league team was in Quebec. Yeah. You get drafted to Shearbrook. You spend two and a half years there, and then you get traded to Charlottetown last year. In like seventy-seven games, you have like a hundred and three points for the Islanders. Like, what's been the key to success ever since you hit here? <laughs> I don't know. It takes it's just <laughs> shoot. Yeah. You got a forty-goal season. Too. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know. I think it's uh, the confidence that I I receive uh, by being here. Uh, my teammates, like I've said it before, they trust me and my coaches and myself too. Uh, coming to Charlottetown, I found back my game that I, I had before. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just been great so far here and I'm really enjoying uh, every every moment of it. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, and I'll, I don't know, probably my confidence and uh, ha- just having fun on the ice has been a uh, has been key to, to my team since I'm on the island. Yeah, and you were invited to uh, Arizona's training camp this past season. Yeah. You came back here, so looking forward to next year, you have a breakout season in the queue. What are you hoping to get from an NHL team next year? Uh, I don't, well, I don't really know, but like, uh, you know, you never know with NHL teams and stuff like that, but obviously every every player who plays in the queue uh, wants to eventually sign a contract or something like that with a pro team so that would be something that I would like to mm-hmm. to experience or something like that but even just to, to get an invitation from a, an NHL team uh, this summer would be great too. And we were going over the most recent stat sheets and it's like okay there's Pat on top and uh, there's Pat yep yeah, and uh, there's Pat <laughs> yeah. yeah how's that feeling? It feels good uh, it's you know it's personal achievements if you can say like that so Obviously, feels good, but the the results for the the team are way uh, more important. So I'm really trying to focus on that recently, and what really counts is uh, lifting the President Memorial Cup at the end of the yeah. season. So it's just a uh, little side notes that you know when you look at it, it's fun, but it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. yeah. And now I'll go to Dawson here. So you started out in Freddie. Mm-hmm. You played minor hockey there. Yeah. Get drafted to the St. John Sea Dogs. You play eleven games, I think, and then mm-hmm. you get sent down to the MHL. What happened? Was it the MHL? Well, yeah, but like, I was like committed to like a, a prep school in the states because okay. I was thinking of going like co- college. I was uh, pretty close to like committing to Providence, but okay. uh, I just ended up going. Like, I didn't even want to go to the St. John training camp. Honestly, my parents <laughs> made me, and, and I had and I had a fun time there with the guys and, and just on the ice with the coaches. And I was like, yeah, like I think like if I want to continue with hockey like the Q uh, mm-hmm. is the spot I want to be so I ended up signing um, and it was just too late they had I think it's four 16 year olds you're allowed each year mm-hmm. and they had to ask for a fifth and they asked me and I just I said no because I wasn't sure yet so when time that camp came it was too late to, to play a full season so I just signed and um, I was only allowed six games because I was going to be in the states considered mm-hmm. like an import yeah. Uh, but I wasn't having a good time there in the States, and I, I actually went to Junior A, and that allowed me to get more games with them, which was nice. How did your parents feel that, you know, they forced you to camp, and then you just said, well, actually, how about Providence, you know? <laughs> no, well, they, they were they're really big on, like, the school school part yeah. of size, and 
uh, part of things, sorry, and uh, they know, like, in the queue, like, school's important, but, like, it's not, like, college yeah. college important, so uh, when I walked into the hotel room, I was like, yeah, Dad, like, I actually just going to go sign a contract tomorrow. Yeah. He's like, all right, I think that's the right choice for you. <laughs> and I was like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So did you play much hockey in the States, or...? Uh, I was there for I think like four four months, just mm-hmm. like a U sixteen program. Uh, mm-hmm. They were supposed to be pretty good, but like they had a, a full group of like new coaches come in. Yeah. Uh, their old coaches like left to go start a new program. Those were the guys who scouted me. Um, so I just I don't know the none of the players really get along yeah. with the, the new guys yeah. and didn't really like how they were doing things. So uh, it wasn't just me who left. Like there was a bunch of guys. A lot of guys didn't come back. Even guys who came back, they left like after two months the next year because nothing changed. So, so uh, sorry. Uh, after the Campbellton stint, you come back up. Is it a year and a half later? You played with uh, St. John. Yeah. And then you get traded to Cape Breton. Mm-hmm. Now you went through another trade since then. But what was the first trade like? Were you expecting it? Like. Uh, kind of not really. Like I, I heard like rumors about like I was gonna get traded or get like an offer for somewheres and. Um, I knew St. John, like I have a new trade clause, so I knew St. John wasn't going to, you know, send me somewheres in Quebec because I told him I don't want to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they were, no I, offense, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they were I was just going to straight up say no, but um, they told me I could go to Cape Breton. I knew they really wanted Francis and uh, I wasn't even getting much playing time in, in St. John anymore. They, they had a bunch of good guys there. Um, so I was like, all right, like they're not a strong team. Like I'll be able to play more minutes, you know, build my confidence back up. So I thought it'd be a, a good place for me to go. And I felt a lot better since I was traded there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you notice much of a difference playing in the States and Canada? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I, the only time I really played in Canada, like since the States was the Q. And yeah. it's a lot more physical than yeah. U16 <laughs> league. So hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. What about, you know, the coaching style and, you know, the intensity you put in? Uh, no, I think... It just kind of depends on the coaches. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, in the States or in Canada. Like, it's just, some coaches have the same ways of coaching. Others have different, so. So what you're saying is we are basically just as good as Canada in hockey, so. I'd say, I'd say we're better. Oh, you're from the States? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Oh, we are. This, this guy's that's what from the saying. States. So, yeah, you know, that's what you're saying. I'm totally against you. <laughs> Canada. That's what we like to hear. Canada's, Canada's like 10 times <laughs> better than the States. Well. Speaking of a jab on home, how'd you feel about that Quebec jab there? Pretty tough. I didn't know, I didn't know about that, but every every guy has his rights and his. his it's a, it's a French thing. Like yeah. I'm fine in French, but like I don't know. I just can't talk too much of it. And it'll get my head spinning. Yeah. So no offense against yeah. French guys. Didn't just, want to live there. Yeah, it's I'm pretty good in French though. Like he understands and everything, but yeah. just he doesn't doesn't want to. At, well, I was, I was thinking right, maybe like a spot like Bay Como or like, yeah, Bravo, right, or like yeah, yeah. far away, it's cold, like yeah. just oh, all okay. French. Like some place, most places actually speak yeah. quite a bit of English oh, too. Mm-hmm. So, so but, you come, you come. By, now you get traded this year to Charlottetown. Now, was this trade expected for you? Were you expecting any moves at the deadline this year? No. <laughs> yeah, actually, well, got a couple texts from a couple guys I knew, like probably two weeks before Christmas break, and they were like, "Hey, like." you're coming here? I was like, what? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, like, uh, our coach came in and like asked us about you. And I was like, oh, like really? And they're like, yeah, like you should come here. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And like our last two games of the before court break were against Charlottetown. <laughs> so like they had a bunch of guys were talking to me and more saying like, hey, when are you coming here and stuff like that? And it wasn't even done yet. So like I just went home over break and... Uh, Basically packed up? Yeah, right? packed yeah up. well, I was trying to get like I was seeing if our GM and Cape could, you know, get a deal done or anything, but uh, I think it was like the day before he called me, he's like, yeah, like we can't get a deal done. So I called him, or I was on the phone with him and I was like, yeah, you know what, like, I'm not coming back, <laughs> like, if you don't trade me, it's simple as that, like, I need a deal to get done, and no offense to that organization, it's just like, I'm a 19 year old, I haven't even played a playoff game in the queue, so, yeah. um, when I heard that the chance I could go to Charlottetown, I wanted to take a full advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you already in Cape and you had to No, I was still at home. Was still home. I was actually going to Halifax for like a, a couple of days, like right before. And like I had my car packed already to go to Halifax, saying bye to my mom. And 
Jim called me. He's like, hey, welcome to the Islanders. He's like, when can you be here? I was like, oh, well, I'm going to Halifax today. Do you want me to just like not go there? He goes, like, no, you can come like Sunday or something like that. He's like, thanks. <laughs> Take the uh, left at that round. Yeah. Uh, after New Brunswick, eh? yeah. No, he was, he was really nice and understanding. Just said, you know what? Like, you got a quarantine anyways. Like, some guys are coming Sunday. You might as well just come with them. Take a few days to yourself yeah. still. I was like, perfect. Yeah. And you knew quite a few Islanders, you said then, eh? Yeah, well, they have a lot of maritime guys. And then... Yeah. Uh, been playing against them, <laughs> yeah. especially especially last year. Played them every weekend. Um, it was never fun playing against them, so I was, was definitely <laughs> happy to join them. So how was walking in that DR? You know, former competitors. Now you're on the team. You know, what's uh, going through your head? I don't know. I didn't know what it was think. I'd be like, oh, like I remember chirping some of these guys, having battles with them. So I didn't know if they were they were gonna hate me or not. Yeah. But uh, like I said earlier, like they gave me a warm welcome to the yeah. team. Made me feel right at home. Well, at the end of the day, it's hot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's business how it is. So <laughs> yeah. whenever new guys comes in, it's just like, hey, we're we're, we're family now, pretty yeah. much. So. Yeah, basically, whatever you had differences before, they're gone. All out the window. Yeah. Yeah. So what's it like having a guy like Dawson come into the locker room and halfway through the season? Yeah, it's great. Like he's a great guy. A guy who loves to have fun. We we sit beside each other in the dressing room. So. Uh, we always love to try a couple of jokes, <laughs> even before games and in between games and stuff like that. So he brings a lot on the ice, but he also brings a, a lot in the dressing room to, to have fun and uh, remove stress and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He's pretty good at it. Any, re- any reoccurring jokes, eh? <laughs> Sorry? Any reoccurring jokes or anything? Or uh, anything that's been going all season? No, yeah. no, 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 just no. anything, yeah. anything that's on, on the trend right yeah. now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Joke around about that. For Sometimes sure. we just talk to him. We just all the team. We just do like Stasi. You know, it's just his, his name, name, and we like to say, yeah. I don't know. It's, Is it like? Do you think you're the jokester of the room now? Oh uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think I was quiet like the first first few days, maybe a week that I was came to PEI, but. Uh, I, everyone seems to be like really tight in this group, so I got a lot more comfortable and started, you know, speaking out a little more. Um, just don't want to say anything like over aggressive, cross any lines, you know, <laughs> step over somebody's turf. So yeah. I just kind of try to stay in my place, and if I say a joke and people laugh, I'm happy. <laughs> so we had Cormier on, and he actually said Xavier was. Yeah, 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 yeah I'd probably pretty, say he, he, yeah. he'd be the main joke. What, so. What's what's he like in the locker room? <clears throat> Oh, he's he's a funny guy. He's funny. He does like everything to make the guys laugh. And it works <laughs> full, pretty hard. Full of energy. Yeah. I think I think kind of his thing is like he doesn't even do it like thinking it's funny. It's just like his personality. <laughs> yeah. And next thing you know, he has the whole team crying and laughing. Yeah. So it's just like jokes or like. Is there anything like you guys want to say like that he does or? Well, like before games. Uh, right now he's hurt, so he's not playing. But before Christmas, we started something. He would grab like my pair of scissors I had in my bag, and he would just go around the room and hey boys, quit haircuts. And he would just go around and cut hair off the boys' heads, and then he said like, yeah, you score when you get a haircut, so get it done. And yeah. then I think it was maybe in like Bakemo. Yeah. Like the first game he he arrived, he was playing, and the new guys they were like. What the hell is he doing? Cutting hair. <laughs> I see oh. this guy walking around with scissors. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, the boys are like, no, nah, see me, I'm good. <laughs> Touch my hair. Yeah. And he was like, oh, all right, all right. So we just put back the scissors. And, yeah. Speaking of speaking of haircuts, and being able to laugh at yourself. Oh, Dawson yeah, had to bring that up. <laughs> Tell us about the reverse mohawk. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it was my first kind of playoff experience, and it was junior A, but still junior hockey. Um, and I just, I was a 16 year old, so the boys were just all getting haircuts, and I was like, crap, like, I gotta do something. <laughs> I don't want it to, like, I don't want to get something that I think is gonna look good, but it turns out bad, so I might as well just do something stupid. <laughs> and one of my line mates was a 20 year old, so I actually, uh, I somehow convinced him, like, just a little 16 year old rookie, convinced, like, my 20 year old line mate to, uh, to do it with me. We ended up on <laughs> the captain, just sat us on the stool, and just went right down, right down the middle of the head, and next thing you know, is I stuck with that. You didn't, you didn't like think, you know, maybe just go blonde or something for the playoffs? No. No one was doing that on a team. It was mostly mullets and buzz cuts. And I don't know, I had somewhat long hair, so I didn't really want to get a buzz cut. I'm not too big on those. I just wanted to do something funny. And What'd you have against the mullet? 
Nothing. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think I could pull one off. So. Oh, everyone could pull off. One. I don't know. Some boys on the team had really nice ones, and I was like, crap, Like I, I, I can't compete with that. So <laughs> might as well do something funny and get a couple laughs out of it. Yeah, you just went right down the middle. And it just, yeah, yeah, I mean, people at school even loved it, too. Like, every day during Okanda, I was in the front of class just taking off my hat for the anthem, and everyone in the back started laughing. <laughs> and I just turn around and give them a wave. So uh, going into the rest of the season for you guys, what is the goal to like finish out the regular season? Is it to like basically win every game, or you guys know you get might lose like one? You might, well, everyone has an off night, yeah. so like you might lose one here or there. But what's what's the main goal going into it? I think, like I said earlier, like stick into the details, uh, all the de- little details, defensive zone details, and stuff like that that we're gonna bring into our playoff series. Uh, we really gotta focus on that and stick to. To the game plan every night to to go out and perform. You know, we we want to finish first. It's not mm-hmm. something we talked a lot a lot about, but uh, yeah, we want to finish first to to have like home advantage and home ice advantage and stuff like that. And uh, when we start the series, yeah, for sure. And something I want to bring up about a home ice advantage here is you go look at a rink like Charlotte Towns, and it can only sit like three thousand people. Now, you go to a rink like Halifax, you got like 8,000 to 11,000 people there. How much of a home ice advantage do you guys think you'll really have with that limited amount of crowd there? I've only been, I haven't been here for crazy long, but like just even noticing like with even 50% capacity yeah. in the rink, like for a home games, like it still sounds like really loud, like pretty full, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, and then now with like a, the capacity going up even, even higher, um, I think going into playoffs with the 3,000 fans or more we have, um, st- that place definitely going to be bumping. Yeah. yeah, and one advantage of the smaller building is it gets just as loud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. I, I think we had like maybe 2,800 the other day and it was pretty yeah. loud. Yeah. And, uh, yesterday we went in Halifax and it was, there was a lot of people. I don't know. I think it was like their, the most they got this season and it was really, really, really it was loud when they scored and so yeah, home home ice does do a, a difference. Mm-hmm. And how how do you guys find? I know you said like you find the support pretty good, but like, how do you find? You've been here for a year and a half. How how do you find the Charlottetown fan support? Like, do you find like there's so many people actually into the game or? Yeah, yeah, fans are great. To be honest, here they're. I think they really they really love the the Islanders and mm-hmm. the community around it. Uh, all appreciate us so. Um, yeah, it's great to have their support every night and to, to hear them to hear them cheer on us uh, during games. It's, it always helps us uh, yeah. a lot. Like I was going to say, some most of these Island, Islanders fans have been through some bad times over yeah. the years. Yeah. And now they're getting really good and you guys are making it happen for them. Yeah. So I think they're pretty happy with you guys overall. <laughs> yeah. I would expect yeah. so. 100%. You know, do you find there's just more of a different atmosphere in Charlottetown or how do you describe playing in Charlottetown compared to St. John or you know Sherbrooke or well for me they were like even Cape the probably not as much fans definitely not actually (laughs) but uh, they they were bigger rinks and I think here in Charlottetown having the smaller barn with uh, you know just filling out the crowd every night having it really loud I think that's a pretty big atmosphere pretty nice having that and just going in the game like you might be having one of the worst days of your life, but as soon as you step on the ice, you hear them all cheering. You get so excited, mm-hmm. so it turns everything around. Last thing before we let you go, I want to talk about the casino a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. we had uh, we had Cormier on. He talked about the cards. So yeah, you, you guys apparently you guys play a lot of cards on the bus rides. Is yeah, that true? A lot, yeah, just a lot of blackjack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. blackjack for you. What about you? Blackjack only on the bus with the the guys. Apparently. Brett, I'm pretty sure Brett is really good at poker. Yeah, I'm not a big poker player. I haven't <clears> played poker. Um, well, I actually don't even know how to play poker. So the same boat as yeah, me. So. I haven't, haven't played poker, but uh, yeah, I heard he's pretty good at it too. So then, do you guys actually play a lot of blackjack on the bus? Or what? yeah, it's. I think well, where are we going? Bathurst, maybe four four and a half hour trip. We won the game, and then on the way back, like we just ate our meal. Probably took us thirty minutes, and we opened up the tables in the back, and 
we stopped playing when we got to the rink and we didn't even know like we weren't looking outside the window seeing where we are like, <laughs> now, do you, it, on the bus do you guys play for like money or is it like it has yeah. to be has yeah, to be, has to be. No other way yeah a lot of guys like buy in uh I think Pat's one of them. They buy yeah. like ten bucks and play like two, three dollar hands. So yeah. some guys are like that, but then there's a there's a bunch of guys who love buying in. You know, twenty five bucks. Just our max bets are ten. So. Is that is that you? Pat's uh, Pat's 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 Pat. He he starts with ten, but he keeps on losing, so he's still there. Like, even another ten. No, I, I usually so start. I usually like, start with twenty five. Test yeah. the waters with some five dollar hands. See if it's hot or not. Whether I'm down or up, I start doing ten dollar bets after. Yeah. Next thing I know is I'm down a hundred. Box and I'm like shit. I got a battle back. Yeah. So, so you guys play blackjack. Who's the dealer? Oh, uh, it switches every time. You know, yeah. just uh, we usually and depends it, how many guys are playing. I was just wondering if there's someone that's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna be a part of this. I'm just gonna be the dealer and watch everyone lose some money. Or no, like, well, you, the dealer loses a lot of money usually. Yeah, yeah so. I never went dealer because I saw once I think we were in <laughs> she tweeted me after a game and she tweeted me some guys lost a lot. Uh, I won't really say the the amount of money they lost during oh, that night. Oh, come on now. They were two together, and they, they lost a bit of money. Uh, I only went the deal with the ones, like, with, with the buddy, and uh, me and him both lost 200 that night. Yeah. So we were just flipping, like, everybody 21s, and it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. You've lost 200 on a bus ride. No, this was just like on a Saturday. Night. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Oh. We, were, we were having a little get together with oh, the guys, okay. playing oh, okay. some cards, and then, yeah, I mean, the hotel, I probably lost. More than two hundred too, but it happens sometimes. So, the actual casino, like who's who's there most of the time? Like if, on your free time, <laughs> we probably have the same answer. May, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Maynard. Uh, I think you bill it there, honestly. Like, <laughs> bill it yeah, you might, you might. got a bed at the back. Patty Lebron probably has a bed over there. Who's that? Patty Oh yeah, he might yeah. too. Yeah. What about you guys? Not you guys. Not regulars. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I've, I've tried to stay away. I lose quite a bit playing with the guys. So, uh, like the other night was only my first time, my first time going. But I think I'll be going a little bit more. It's fun. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. Maybe we'll uh, make some bunk beds at Red Choice for you. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, you might have to. Looks yeah. cozy there. Yeah. I mean, you guys literally have the arena right beside it too. So yeah. like, it's it's kind of tempting. Like you yeah. know, after practice yeah. or something, it's literally right there. So well, last time I went, like when I was in Cape Breton, like they had the one right by the right too. They didn't even have tables open, it was only slots, so that's why I've probably stayed away, but now that the tables are open here, it's, it's pretty dangerous. Well, thanks for hopping on, gentlemen. We wish you the best this season, and uh, have a good one. Well, we yeah. hope to see you in the Mem Cup, too. Yeah, yeah thank Maybe you very much. much. Appreciate you having Presidential us. Cup, sir, and then hopefully see you in the Mem Cup. Yeah, yeah. 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 hopefully it all works out well. Uh, hopefully. So, yeah. Yeah. Put a whooping on St. John there for you, a little Oh, I, I, I love that. <laughs> so. All right, well, Justin, why don't you tell the people where to find us? Yeah, I was about to say, you can find us on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can follow along there, and you can like and subscribe on YouTube. That would be greatly appreciated. And, well, you know, like we're, it would be greatly appreciated. It would be. <laughs> just a little bit. You should. Uh, we'll and let then, you hop in on a blackjack game if you do. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Uh, then lastly we got a new media page going on Instagram called uh, waterboys underscore media give that a follow we're covering all island sports and if you want us to cover your sport just give us a DM and we'll try and make it there cue the music (laughs)